The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. Well, the cattle on feed numbers out on Friday after the close, and it looks like some of these numbers may be a little off the pre-report estimates. We're going to talk about that and get some market perspective from a new voice here on the show today. Matt Bresnahan with Blue Line Futures joins us. Matt, great to talk with you. Thanks for joining us on the show. Appreciate the time. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you for having me on. Well, let's start with that cattle on feed report. Everyone was kind of watching that placements number 7% below 2023. I think that's maybe a little off some of those pre-report estimates on feed was up slightly as well. Uh, I guess just give me your uh, your thoughts on those cattle on feed numbers and, and what they could mean for this uh, cattle market that had a pretty solid day on Friday. I just wonder what this could mean for this market heading into next week. What do you think? Yeah, I think a lot of the price action today was an anticipation of a bullish report. A lot of times when, you know, the expectations are for a bullish report, it's never bullish enough. But what we saw today, it was a bit of a surprise. You know, expectations pre-report were for placements to be down approximately 12.3%. So that, you know, that 7.4% you know, placement number year over year. It took the wind out of the sails a little bit. We'll probably see the follow through you know, on Monday. One of the things you know about the cattle on feed reports is that it comes out after the market closes. So, you know, people with positions on are you know typically him and hawing on on the report the entire weekend. So, you do see a little bit of an additional follow through. Now, you know, the feedlot herd rose uh, by zero point four percent with the expectation that it would only rise you know, 0.1%. So in that aspect, you know, it was a little bit of a bear surprise, but fundamentally speaking, you know, the balance sheets are still extremely tight. Um, you know, the rally that we've seen over the last handful of weeks, it's not like it's unsubstantiated. Uh, it, it makes a ton of sense, especially, you know, with how tight the available supply is. Now, what you have seen, if you're looking at the technical side, you know, looking at a standard 14-day RSI, you know, you have had some bearish divergence um, in both, you know, the front month uh, live cattle and feeder cattle contracts, you know, over the last week or so. So, you know, there there is a likelihood uh, that we will see a correction here, but, you know, I don't think it will be um, akin to, you know, the major breakdown that we saw in late October. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and to that point as well, you know, uh, comparatively to the grains, which has been a, a tough market to watch, and that's a whole other story we can talk about in a second. But, you know, cattle have had a pretty nice rally here since really the beginning of the year when we hit some of those lows in the fall. And I know a lot of cattle producers are are happy or happier than they were a few months back, but also uh, got to be a smart marketer in here in terms of what's going on in this cattle market, don't you, Matt? Absolutely. You know, over the last, you know, once bearish divergence, it, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite things to look for, you know, using a standard 14 day RSI, particularly on the cattle contracts, because, you know, it kind of serves as the canary in the coal mine, you know, Hey, this rally is starting to slow down. This could be an opportune, a very good opportunity. You know, if you had been long to, you know, lower or, you know, decrease your exposure. But, you know, if you're, if you have exposure to it, you know, on the cash side, it's a tremendous opportunity to extend coverage, you know, moving forward. I mean, it's, it, it's not like the opportunity is going to go away and prices are just going to you know, fall out of bed all at once. Um, you know, particularly with how tight the balance sheets remain, fundamentally speaking. Sure. Today's report was a bit of a disappointment. Holistically, you know, things look pretty good. Um, you know, it's almost <laughs> an exact opposite of what we're kind of seeing, you know, in the grain markets. In the grain markets, it does kind of feel like death by a thousand cuts. 
you know, the slow bleed across corn and beans, particularly, you know, it, it doesn't feel great. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it, it's something that comes with being involved in the markets is that, you know, you have to kind of deal with the cards that are being put forth and, you know, managing your risk. So is there a probability that we'll get a short covering rally? More than likely not. Absolutely. And it could come sooner rather than later, but it's prudent to acknowledge that there is a possibility that prices continue to go lower. Yeah. Now that's a, that's a very, very great point. Uh, and uh, one note too, I was going to throw out there, uh, cold storage report. USDA did come out with a note, said they're delaying that until Monday. So we'll get that set of numbers on Monday afternoon, see if that has any impact in the cattle and hog markets. But to your point in grains here, uh, Matt, just this bearish weight, it continues and, you know, throwing a three handle on spot corn on Friday, not something that folks want to see. And I know that, uh, I'm hearing a lot of producers are making some tough calls with options expiration coming up here on March contracts. I mean, some folks are just saying, okay, I'm done rolling into this carry in this market and I'm taking stuff to town. I mean, it's, it's just a tough conversation on the grain side overall, isn't it, Matt? Absolutely. Especially when you consider, you know, the cost of production increases, you know, just even last year. And then to take the haircut that we have on price it, it just kind of feels like a double whammy. It's like getting kicked while you're down. So, you know, it, it's become a very tenuous environment because there hasn't been, you know, a capitulation point. It, where we're at right now, it kind of feels like we're in a giant game of chicken between the commercials and managed money. And it's a matter of who blinks first. So, you know, the expiration of the March contract, you know, seeing positions roll out of it, I think you could see some follow through there, you know, particularly on the managed money side, you know, if they're, if they're talking about it internally, you know, they could be looking at it here as well, is the juice still worth the squeeze? Mm -hmm. you know, they don't necessarily have to roll a position. So effectively the net short that managed money, uh, managed money funds have been building over the last 13 weeks, which is a crazy long time. Um, you know, it could alleviate itself a little bit here and present an opportunity for, you know, a shorter term pop, but, you know, ultimately it, it remains a tight situation, particularly, you know, seeing a three handle on spot corn, it, it, it never feels comfortable. No, it does not feel comfortable. That is very, very true. And uh, Matt, too, you know, you think about the overall, you brought up the cost of inputs and obviously the overall interest rate environment, too, is a, is a big deal. That's still a talking point. You look at the outside markets, you know, stocks, of course, have been on their tear here at the beginning of the year, all time highs, you know, put in. You look at stocks to wrap up the week Friday, kind of mixed bag, energy's under pressure. I mean, there's, there's that whole aspect too. When can we see rate cuts, things like that? I feel like that's still a big catalyst that's weighing on these ag markets quite a bit, Matt. Absolutely. You know, the ramp up in volatility that we've seen in the outside markets, like, you know, it, we feel like we're walking on eggshells in the grains, even amidst this, you know, slow bleed that we've been in. But, you know, looking at the equity indices in particular, like the E-mini or like the ES contract or the NASDAQ, you know, before a couple earnings reports this week, you know, there was a lot of sentiment back and forth where it felt like, you know, these things might really fall out of bed here. And going back to the managed money side, if you saw a really robust correction in equities, you know, that could be another capitulation point forcing managed money that is involved in the grains to rebalance elsewhere. You know, if if they were, you know, say they were in a losing position, you know, on some of the equity futures, uh, the S&P, Russell 2000, NASDAQ, whatever it may be, as a means of, you know, changing their you know risk exposure or their risk profile uh, that they have on. And you know, it's still 
does kind of feel like we're on shaky ground. We did see periods of volatility or, you know, volatility indexes increase this week. Mm -hmm. You know, like in the cattle contracts where we did have bearish divergence on some of the or on the front month uh, live cattle and feeder cattle contracts, you, know, you do see that in the ES contract as well. Matt, great perspective. Really appreciate you being on the show with us here to kind of wrap up the week. Final thoughts from you. Uh, what do you want folks to remember as they kind of head into the weekend? Maybe not having a great feeling about a lot of these markets, especially on the ag side. I mean, what would you reiterate to folks to keep in mind here as they're looking at their marketing strategy right now, Matt? Every, every situation is unique. You know, whether you're completely marketed for you know 23 or you're sitting on 80% of your, you know, your corn bushels, you have to kind of remember that you know, the market is going to move no matter what. It's prudent to manage your exposure and, you know, the the possibility that prices could still move lower from where we're at. That being said, there, there will be opportunities and there will be instances where we see rallies that provide opportunities to sell into. You know, navigating a bear market, you know, it, it's never comfortable but it's the situation that we find ourselves in currently, at least for the grains, you know, on the cattle side, it's, it's a far different story, but taking a moment to step back and try and take emotion out of it is paramount in my opinion. Well, great thoughts. Appreciate the perspective. I know folks can uh, learn more, reach out online, bluelinefutures.com. Matt Bresnahan with Blue Line Futures. Thanks for joining us on Market Talk, and we'll look forward to getting you back on the program again in the future. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me, Jesse.